Perfect. All right. Hey, this is Scott Ayers here with Agora Pulse. And today we are interviewing uh, Kim Garst. I'm really, really excited. I've been excited about this one on my calendar for like a month now because I've known Kim online for gosh, six, seven years maybe. And it's the first time we've ever had a conversation other than email or tweeting each other or something. So I'm really excited to have Kim on here. And we're going to be talking about um, at least five of her, you know, favorite tools that she uses for her online business. We're not going to, this isn't all of them because, you know, like most, we have 30 different ones we use um, and these aren't in any particular order. These are just some that we want to talk about. But Kim, before we, we kind of get into that, for anybody who doesn't know you, kind of tell us a little bit about what you do and, and kind of what you're doing currently. I know some things have shifted from you in the last few years. Yes, it certainly has. But for those who may not know me, my name is Kim Garst. Um, I am, I call myself kind of like an online business strategist because it's not just social media. It's a little bit more than just that in order to, to have a fruitful business and productive business and a, a business that generates a, the amount of revenue that you want today. It has to be more than just social. So uh, for me, that's kind of my passion is I really love helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses um, in the using social and digital media. Uh, if you don't know where to find me, you can find me at kimgarst.com. I have a, a lot of uh, content that's primarily focused on on social media, but there's a lot of other business related content as well. Now, what's your biggest thing that you do now? Because you go to your website, you talk about live streaming. Is that still, I remember when you got on Periscope, like Periscope exploded, you were big into Periscope. Is live streaming still kind of your niche? Well, live streaming is uh, one of those things that I'm extremely passionate about. I feel like it has so much value to us as entrepreneurs. I've strayed away from it a little bit as I've been struggling to define, you know, who I serve and, you know, how I want to serve them. Um, I'm almost there. Get, I'm in a rebrand uh, project right now. So okay. my website's cool. uh, going to be uh, redone here before too much longer. And um, and I'm going to get back to live streaming because I love it. I love the fact that I can engage with people in real time. I think it is the heart of uh, what I would call quality social media interaction. And, um, and so it's definitely going to be a big part of, of what I do going forward, yes. Very cool. Yeah. So what did you, now I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't tell Kim any questions I was going to ask her. We're just having a conversation. We're winging so, it. We're winging <laughs> it. So how did you get into social media? I'm always curious about that. Like how did this become your thing and be, what you became known for? I'd be really interested to find that out. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but maybe what's that one? How did you hop into it and say, Hey, this is a business I can do. Oh, well, it's funny because I'm old. I go back like a long time, a long ways in the internet space. Yeah. Um, I kind of call myself a pioneer because my first business uh, I launched in 1991 when my son was born. My first son was born. So back then there were no resources. You know, you couldn't watch YouTube videos. There, it was no Google machine. You know, all the stuff that we take for granted now and all the resources that we have at our fingertips is kind of information overload now, whereas then you would have been like, oh my gosh, I would have given an arm and a leg to have had access to some of the stuff that we have today. Um, so my first business, to get to the heart of, of answering your question, my first business was web design. Uh -huh. And um, I remember people saying, you know, if you don't have a website, in fact, I said it, if you don't have a website in five years, you're going to be out of business because that was like the big thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to have a website. I got to, you know, I got to get online. And um, when social media came around, it was like MySpace, right? And I'm like, and then there was Facebook. And I was actually one of those people who said, you know, I'll never have a, I'll never have a Facebook account, <laughs> you know, until I saw it. Yeah. And I had been, um, for years, I had been generating leads through uh, AOL business chat rooms. So that goes back away a day or two. I remember and, them, yeah. Yeah, and business uh, B2B boards, you know, I, and, and so I say I was doing social media before it was really called social media. Yeah. And when I saw Facebook and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is like, you know, business chat rooms on steroids because you can start to attract people to you versus you having to like go in and harvest people kind of thing. Yeah. So I was like, OK, whoa, this is like deja vu. It's like. The same thing I remember saying and hearing other people say back in the day was, you know, if you don't have a website in five years, 
then you started to hear people say, oh, you're, if you don't, if you're not on social media in five years, you're going to be out of business. So it was like one of those moments of, I got to wake up and smell the coffee here. You know, this is a big opportunity. Right. And that's why I started, um, took my business in the social media direction. Very cool. Yeah. I remember those AOL chat boards and Yahoo chats and MySpace and all that. I love MySpace. I still miss the glory days of MySpace for the rest. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really cool. That's cool how you kind of how, how you've kind of gone through. I remember when the Facebook came out. I remember it was a call. I worked at a, I was a, a, a church recreation minister at the time, and a, and a college student came in and said, "You got to look at this the Facebook thing." And I'm like, "You're crazy. MySpace will never go away." And then now look at it. So yeah, you never know. You got you've adjusted and you've you know, you've shifted so many times and kept up with it, which is, you know, kudos to you. One comment here is funny. Lisa says, if you're old, Kim, then she's ancient. So. <laughs> hey, we just band together, Lisa. It's all good. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, let's hop into some tools. And I think the first one that you had mentioned we were going to talk about was BuzzSumo. Now, most of us are a little familiar with BuzzSumo. Kind of tell us what you use it for and maybe what you used before you hopped into BuzzSumo. Well, um, BuzzSumo, uh, and I will say I do have a paid version of, of the tool. There is a free version, but it it's kind of limiting. So what I'm going to share is probably more from a paid version standpoint, but I think that there is a lot of value in paying for this tool. So oh, that's why sure. I, I want to share what, what I use it for. I... Um, I, every t every week when I try to come, well, actually I've got it down to once a month I do this because every week was getting a little over, a little cumbersome, but once a month I basically source my ideas for blog content. And I use BuzzSumo as a tool to see what people are engaging with the most, which it makes sense if they're engaging with certain types of content, then you write a blog post about it, then your audience is pro probably going to love it too, right? right? So I use it for an idea generator. Like, okay, what types of content is um, one getting the most engagement around a specific uh, category? Like, let's say content marketing or, or Instagram followers or, you know, whatever it is that I want to find out what people are looking at and what people are engaging with most. You just pop in that key phrase and it will give you um, a listing of the most shared content around that particular topic. So it, it keeps me from like writing content that nobody's going to care about, you right. know. And um, and then I also leverage it for ideas for uh, blog titles. You know, I, I say, OK, here's here's the top 10 um, articles around Instagram followers. What's the commonality? You know, mm -hmm. what are the key phrases? And then I start to brainstorm blog titles using this tool as well. Um, then the other thing that I love about this tool is they have a, a feature on it called uh, Facebook Analyzer. And we were talking about this earlier about Post Planner and, you know, kind of sourcing viral content. Yeah. Well, it's essentially the same uh, concept where you can input a topic or a keyword or if you know of a specific fan page that you want to see what their most viral content is. Uh, for the last week, for the last month, you know, for the last year, then it, and even based on category type, like uh, whether it's a video or whether it's text or, you know, what type of content is it? And, uh, and then it'll give you that information, which is, and again, in my, in my opinion, just invaluable because it's not about like, if you want to share that content, you can, or you can create something similar. You know, you can emulate uh, that content and um, and use it for your fan page or for your social media presences. So that was a lot. <laughs> uh, no, no, it was great because I had, you know, sometimes you think, oh, some people use every tool a little bit differently. So it's kind of cool to see how you're using it. Now, to, to before you started using BuzzSumo to, to find blog topics and articles and what were you using before to find those ideas? It was just like searching Google and throwing a dart. You know? Yes. Yeah, so go to the Google machine and you type in your phrase. And okay. What's the top 10 that comes up. But the problem with that, and again, in my opinion is it doesn't take into account the end users value for that piece of content just because it's on the Google machine. <laughs> this means they have good SEO, right? right it doesn't right. mean that it's something that people are going to love and, you know, take the time to read it and share it ultimately. 
So um, I, I really think there's value in, you know, leveraging uh, BuzzSumo for like just checking out the, you know, content. And then again, what do people really want um, versus, you know, just trying to figure it out and hope that something sticks. <laughs> it's my yeah. cheat method. How about that? There you go. And and, and BuzzSumo, you said it's free version and paid version. I mean, they're not crazy expensive. You know, you have different plans. I mean, anywhere from what, like 79 a month on up if you want to have the paid versions. Um, so I, I think, yeah, they used to be more expensive. So they've come down a little bit, which I love because it's, yeah. you know, for a small business owner, it can be really pricey to like, you know, plop down 300 bucks for a tool, right? So. Sure. But if you're being serious about your business and you're yeah. serious about your blog and you got to have the right tools, it's like, you know, you don't you don't become a race car driver and put cheap Walmart tires on your car. You got to you've got to have the right equipment, you know, to kind of fuel your business. And so I think that's that's a big part of it. So very cool. So BuzzSumo, put the link in the comments. Make sure you all you'll check it out. Um, the next one. And I've just started using this one. And I, I have to admit, I've. I've fought against it because I don't like change, but um, Trello, what do you use Trello and what do you use Trello for and kind of what's something that someone might use instead of Trello is what I'm curious. So what do well, you use Trello for? I'm a new Trello user as well. Um, I, when I, it, um, my business partner and I went, decided we were going to go do some separate things. I knew that I needed to do something differently. You know, there's the definition of insanity is, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And I felt like the I, same I, results. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like even though I've had a measure of success, the missing piece for all of my businesses in the past has been systems. You know, I've always just flown by the seat of my pants and okay, what's, what's next? What's next? You know, um, because I, I'm, I, you know, I'm always just that just kind of like a hustler. So I was like, okay, how can I slow down to speed up, which is very, very difficult for me because my mom, I, you know, I've, I've, I've had, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven, I guess seven now, uh, six and seven figure online businesses. And I struggle to, it's against my human nature or my nature, I guess, to slow down. So I was like, okay, I've got to slow down and get this right this time. So I hired a productivity, um, uh, expert to help me build out systems for specific things. So I'll give you a quick example of something that we built that has ultimately saved me probably about five to seven hours a week. Who wouldn't want to say five to right. seven hours a week? <laughs> and I had this massive blog strategy that was single threaded in many cases through me. You know, blog, the blog content was a big uh, process for, for me. So I had to brain dump everything that I did, you know, into Trello. And then my productivity gal took all that, organized it. And we started assigning the team members to do things that I didn't have absolutely have to do. And it has saved my world. Now things just happen and I don't have to panic on a Sunday evening that maybe not everything is done for my blog that's published the following Monday, you know, so it's been amazing. So long story short, it's been uh, a way for me to take things that I I do in my business, brain dump them into Trello and then pr put together a system for specific things that happen in my business. Now, were you using a, a, a tool to do this before or just kind of writing it on your hands and post-it notes? Yeah, right now, it, it, in my head and, you know, just pure like, okay, you know, the team, uh, my team had certain tasks that they did, but it was always like, you, if, if that team member left, it was like an oh my gosh moment, right? It was like, we've got a, a hot mess now and there was no training, there was no, you know, step by step go, you know, when you hired someone new, it was always a, a major issue. And I'm like, we're never going to, we're not doing this again. I'm literally going to slow down and take care of this this time. Now, have you used other sort of, pro I, I kind of love Trello and like the project management, like Asana or Basecamp. Have you used those as well? Or? I have used Basecamp. In fact, we used to use Basecamp quite extensively uh, for branding packages, you know, just that communication tool. Um, right now, uh, another uh, re another thing uh, that we're using Trello for is um of my VIP days and the deliverables for my my client. 
one of the things that I do different for VIP days is I offer up a done for you service as a part of the day. So if there's something that they need done from a tech side, like, you know, they need a sales funnel built and that was what our VIP day was about. Then we use the Trello board to set up the pieces and communicate um, through Trello on the deliverables. Very cool. And Trello is only like, there's a free version and it's like, Ten dollars a month if you pay annually per user, so it's pretty inexpensive. Um, it's very inexpensive for what it's does, doing. What it's saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Very cool, very cool. So y'all make sure you check out Trello. A couple people said Amanda Robinson evidently loves 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 Trello. Yes. So she's really into it. And and Lisa put this comment in there. She's my product manager. Thanks for the flexibility, Scott. I I don't like change, but I change, and I'm I'm embracing Trello now. So all right, good. I appreciate that a little punch in the ribs yeah. there, Lisa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, very cool. So those are two tools, Buzzsumo and Trello. Now I want to talk about a tool that I think I've heard of before, hmm. uh, Agora Pulse. <laughs> you, how long, I would like to know a couple of things. For one, how, how long have you been using Agora Pulse? Okay, so I have to tell a little story about this, okay? I'm going to let you go by yourself on this for a little minute, so go ahead. So I've known Emric for years now through social media and personally, you know, he's spoke at my conference many times, uh, at least three times, I think over the, the years. And, um, I count him as a personal friend, uh, one of the very few people in the social media space that, you know, I, uh, you know, you connect to a lot of people, but you really have formed relationships and friendships with uh, a handful. And Emmerich is, is one of those people for me. Um, and yet, um, I drug my feet to come to actually, uh, you know, start using Agora Pulse because I was, I had some systems set up in some other places, some automation set up. And I was like, Emmerich, you know, I, I can't move until you fix these things. You know, you got to, once you get this, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it was, um, integrated into Agora Pulse, then I'll move. And, um, and so he finally did. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is going to be a pain in my, you know what, but I'm going to move. Well, he made that move very seamless for me. And um, throughout the process of, you know, integrating all my business, you know, all my content, et cetera, into Agora Pulse, I have really fell in love with this tool. And not because uh, obviously, you know, you work for Agora Pulse, so you have this uh, relationship already, but I've tried literally every social media management tool out there because it's not just my content that I have to worry about, it's clients content as well. So what tool is going to help you to actually, you know, manage all of that in one place? And without having to have a tool for Instagram or a tool for, you know, uh, this or that. So Agora Pulse has become that for me. It allows me to automate all of my Twitter content, which is a big piece of, of my need for my business because Twitter drives so much traffic to my blog content. Um, now all of that is integrated. It's all inside of Agora Pulse. But some things just on a day to day basis for those that are, you know, thinking about Agora Pulse. I think the ease of using the tool, whether it's desktop or personally, I love the mobile version because it's very, very quick and easy to um, manage your comments and engage with people uh, through the, uh, the actual phone app. But the desk app works beautifully as well. Um, there's a lot of like just really nifty features, like quick example, um, seeing the history of all of your, uh, conversations that you've had with, uh, you know, someone on Twitter, that's important. You know, you can go back and say, oh, wow, look, I've talked to this person for the past six months or whatever, or just literally going back and seeing the context of a content of a comment or a tweet. Uh, is is really really important. So I, I really love uh, the functionality of of Agora Pulse. It's became definitely a one stop shop for us. No more you know going everywhere. Right, right. And I think something interesting I, I want to kind of key on there is is you use this for a lot of your clients. Now, how does that for you? How is that? What does that look like? Is are you letting them be in the app, or are you just kind of giving them a report? It's kind of maybe walk us through maybe one of your clients and kind of how that integrates. I'm always curious how the agencies really, really use an app like this. Well, the, um, the beautiful part is inside of Agora Pulse, you can actually put folders, 
for your clients, uh, social media presences. So, you know, all you have to do when you log in, you'll see, you know, your, your personal uh, social media account. Uh, you can see, you know, all of your clients in their fold in folders. So when you click on one of those folders, obviously it opens up and lo and behold, there are all of their social uh, media presences. So it makes it very easy to like um, organize, mm -hmm. you know, on the front side, just from a visual standpoint. Um, and then one of the other things that I love about Agora Pulse is that it's visual. So when you have content scheduled, you can see a calendar. And if there's a hole, you know, if there's a missing, you know, piece like, you know, maybe uh, uh, my my client Tom doesn't have a, a something pu a pub uh, scheduled for Wednesday for his Facebook page. Well, I can see that very easily. And so things don't slip through the cracks. So it from just from an organization standpoint, it's amazing because those of you who have used other social social uh, uh, social management tools know that organization is really key. And then I think the visual piece of it really saves our tush a lot too because we can see things you know at a, at a glance versus trying to go in and dig and make sure that you know we have everything covered down on. That can be our new slogan: We save your tush. We'll yeah, there you go. Put your face <laughs> next to it. We save your tush. Uh, very cool. Yeah, and, and, and Emmerich hopped on here and gave us some little love here. So, hey, Emmerich. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's cool to kind of see how you're using it because I think sometimes you see people just think, oh, I'll use it just for myself. But for the clients, think, I think the, the stuff in there used for clients, like I don't do client work except for our company, but I want to take on clients just because I know it's so easy to do in the app. I'm like, I can make myself look like a genius just by using the app. Uh, especially with the the monitoring, the the listening, the the, the reporting, all that sort of stuff. Now, do you give the reports from the app to your clients or not? Some do, some don't. Yes, in fact, we're uh, we're doing a brand, working on a new project where um, we're going to be bringing in uh, a massive amount of realtors ah. for. Um, and we're going to integrate them. So they're not, they don't really care about trying to manage their social media yeah. themselves. They really don't. They just want someone to, to manage it themselves for them. And so being able to organize, organize that and, and have them all in one place uh, is going to be invaluable. But even beyond that, they still want to know, right? They still want to right. know what, how's this making a difference for me and being able to print off or, you know, do the, you know, downloads a, a report for them that you can give them monthly that you don't have to hunt and pack and try to figure it out. You know, I've done that. How many of, if you're a social media manager, you probably have been there where you have this spreadsheet and you like, you go to Instagram, you go to Twitter, you go to all these places and you try to, you know, get the metrics right. together. It's a pain. Um, Agora Pulse just makes it super easy. Very cool. Very cool. We we'll appreciate those. I'm glad you're using the app now for one, but also I love that you talked about the mobile because we, before we got on, on the live, I was telling Kim that, you know, I recently went to Paris the first time I went to, you know, left Texas and on the, on the flight home, the 12 hour flight, whatever it was, I managed all of our social media from my phone on mm -hmm. the flight and it just was so easy and quick. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. It's the first time I'd really had, had to use the, the mobile app because I'm so desktop driven, but on the go, it worked perfectly. So anybody can use it to, to manage clients, to manage yourself, whatever it is. So, so very cool. So let's talk about another tool. And I think most people have probably heard of this one and we're going to save one more for the last that I'm most interested in probably uh, talk about Slack. How, how do you use Slack? If in what is Slack, if nobody knows what it is? Um, Slack, gosh, what do you, how do you like, what's the definition of Slack? Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you how we use it. And then um, maybe that will, uh, kind of define what it is. Essentially, Slack is an app that you can use, you can download and use it on your desktop. You can also use it on your phone. So I do both mm -hmm. because going back to um, Agora Pulse, I'm constantly on the go. So being able to, you know, check in um, and, uh, you know, manage my social media or check in with my team, it's important, you know. So Slack for us is just that. We organize uh, communication around specific projects. So let's say the blog project uh, and the team members that are associated with that blog project will be on that Slack, Slack channel yeah. uh, for that particular um, project. And then the communication will flow from that. Now, it's slightly different from Trello. You may be thinking, well, why don't you just do that in Trello, right? 
but it's immediate. It's like a, it's just like a, a way to communicate around um, the, the kind of the question and answer scenario. You know, maybe you have a, a quick question you need answered. Um, the processes of, uh, of the blog project we have on Trello, the communication we try to keep on Slack because the immediacy of it. Um, and you wouldn't want to keep up with all that, you know, yeah. conversation in a, in a project board. Yeah. And we share uh, we share files through Slack, uh, you know, like for a quick example, if, uh, you know, my graphic designer is doing uh, Facebook ads uh, images, right? Uh, he will get those done, uh, you know, Slack them to the ads manager and she'll take them and, and go do ads with them. So it's just a way for us to quickly, you know, communicate, uh, share content. Uh, you can also search for content. So no more losing conversations. You know how when you trade emails back and forth, before you know it, you're like, what? Where, where's that email? And uh, I think Slack just keeps that annoyance down for sure. Right. right. Yeah. I remember when they launched, I, I, I was big into, you remember Hip Chat? Was it Hip Chat? I think it was. Everybody was into that one because it was something like Slack. And then I thought, no, we'll never leave that. And then Slack came along. And now I, I don't know what I'd do without Slack. It's been so... I mean, I can be on the go, I can be at home, you know, working remotely wherever. And I have all those conversations ready to go and can send someone a quick message. Hey, I need you to go do that, do that. Or I need help with this. That, that's, I think it's great. Yeah. And there's, there's free versions of it. And there's also plans for, you know, you can pay per user. This depends on how big you are, uh, of how much you do. And they integrate with so much stuff. All the, I don't know if you use any of the integration stuff you can pull in. Sometimes that can be a, too much, but all the things you can apps you can pull in and have posts inside channels. I think is really cool. I, I send myself uh, a personal message to me only yes. on Slack every time we publish a new blog post. Well, that way when, it, um, when it goes live, I know it and I can go share it on social or wherever. Well, Trello integrates with it. Google calendar integrates, right. uh, Google docs integrate. So those are things that we um, leverage with Slack for sure. Um, one of the things that I use my personal channel for is just cool things that I see that I don't want to lose. Right, right. So I, it's kind of like a like an idea board kind of sort mm -hmm. of for me, you know. Um, and and that's just a nobody sees that but me, and you know, it's a kind of just a like a repository for me. Right. Yeah. So I don't think anybody can live without Slack these days. If they ever go away, we're in trouble. Yeah. It's kind right. Of like <laughs> Facebook leaves, we're in trouble. So the last one I want to talk about is mini chat, and I'm starting to become addicted to mini chat lately because of. A few guests we've had. I think Amanda Robinson's comment on here. She was talking about mini chat. Andrew and Pete have. So I would love to see because you've been. I always view you, and maybe I'm wrong, as more of a Twitter person. You know, because you've. I saw you on Twitter so much and Periscope and all those. So how are you using mini chat either with your own business or with clients? I'm kind of curious of either. Well, essentially, uh, I think, th and this is like the the kind of the um, what's the word buzz phrase maybe lately is the whole um, chat bot concept, right? You know, in those one on one conversations, and I think there's huge value in communicating uh, with people one on one. I think that is the I think there are days of just broadcasting and hoping that you just like. Um, attract people to you. I think those are like on the short end of the downhill slide. <laughs> so um, it's not to say that you won't attract people to you, but I, I really think we've got to slow down and really start to talk to people mm -hmm. and talk with people. Uh, and I think that the chat functionality gives us that option from the standpoint of um, automating pieces of it to where you get people down to a place where you can spend time because the problem with it, <clears throat> excuse me, has always been, um, well, you know, I, how am I going to scale that? You know, how am I going to be able to manage talking to all these people? And, and I, that is a problem. So that goes back to how can you automate down to a place where you, you've got people to a place where they are ready to talk to you and you're ready to talk to them. So I think that's why mini chat uh, or tools like them, are amazing. Now, um, there's a couple of pieces that I would recommend if you're just brand new and you don't, what is this mini chat thing and what's this chatbot stuff? And I, I don't understand what she's saying. Um, but one of the things that every fan page has is a quick example. 
is something called um, it's it's a response time essentially. Yeah. If you go to your page, you'll see that you know you have uh, Facebook assigns you that number based on how quickly you respond. Well, the key to this is that you have to respond one to every, like 80% of the comments uh, and to get 100% response time. So you have to respond to 80% of the comments within 15 minutes. So <laughs> who can do that? Yeah, Let's right. Get real, yeah. Yeah. Right. So how do you fix that problem so that you can get the the 100% response time? And, and the way you do that is, is uh, setting up that welcome message as a quick example, using some sort of a bot functionality where somebody messages your page and you, you, welcome, you say, hey, you know, I'm super excited that you reached out or whatever you want to say, you know, uh, for your business. Um, maybe you give them options on, you know, where they can go to get uh, information. But to, to really paint a bigger picture, that's one key thing. Yeah. But um, I'm sorry, I get excited about this because it's it's a big topic. Right. And, yeah, and, it's it's big right now. Yeah, everybody and everybody's confused about it. Some I think too. But just core things like you know having some sort of a Q and A bot built for certain types of questions that you get. Um, that's a little bit more complex. But there, here's a simple tip for you. And this, my friend Jason Swank, um, who is a um, he owned an agency exited out of that agency for eight figures. And now he trains other agencies how to, you know, grow, scale yeah. and exit if they want to. So he did something very simple and I'm always telling people about this. He connected his contact form on his website to his messenger um, bot. Now what happens is when they ask a question, on his contact form on his website, it links directly to his messenger and he gets that question in his messenger. And then he can respond immediately if, if he's available to that person or he can set up an automated message. In his case, he responds immediately. So, or tries to, you know, during the course of normal business hours. And, um, and lots of times what he'll do, instead of just, you know, typing out a quick response, he'll do a video and respond to people. He's created over six figures in sales from this one wow. strategy. Hmm. Boom. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's worth doing it <laughs> right yeah. there. Uh, now, Amanda says she's a complete chatbot geek, and I would agree that she is. <laughs> now, Amanda, than, we need to talk, girl. Right, right. Um, other than, you know, there's mini chat and there's chat bots and all. What else out there? Have you used any other things besides mini chat and why mini chat? Why did you choose it over the other ones that are out there? Well, honestly, at the time that I got busy with uh, mini chat or the chat bot functionality, a lot of people were using uh, mini chat already from a marketing standpoint. And, you know, goes to that mass adoption thing, you know, okay, well, everybody else is using this tool. So maybe it's the best one. But I have looked at a couple of others. I've looked at uh, Chat Fuel. I think Chat Fuel, in my mind, is a little bit more complex. Um, it, I don't know. It doesn't flow. And these are not, this is, the, this is the sad part. Most of us do not think like a bot. So when you're, when you're trying to design a bot and you're thinking, okay, if this, then that, mm -hmm. it's really confusing really quickly. So having those visual elements is really important for me. And I just felt like chat bot, chat fuel wasn't quite there. Mini chat has been um, amazing. They're uh, innovating very quickly. I know there are some others as well. I think there's um, mobile, mobile monkey. Or, um, I think, I don't know. I may be, I may be misstating that one. I forget, but there's a ton of yeah. a ton of tools out there. I think primarily the biggies are Mini Chat and Chat Fuel. Mm. I'm sure there'll be some others that are you know coming along that'll uh, give them uh, a run for their money. But so far, my my uh, top pick is still Mini Chat. Yeah, because it seems like from what I, I've been going through there, I, I actually signed up for a a, a, a what's it, a course that they do on mini chat through messenger. I signed up for it a couple of days ago, just to kind of see how they do it. And it seems so simple to set up. I mean, it's, it's, it's user friendly. You don't need to be, you know, be a, a coder to figure it out. You just kind of have to, you know, Quentin Tarantino it a little bit. How, what do you want, where do you want to take people? And then how do you go backwards? That's kind of how I look at it. And that's, that's a hard process. I think for some to like brainstorm, they're like, okay, what do I want people to do? And then how do I back channel yeah, to get there? Exactly. 
And it's that if this, then that concept. So it's like you can get lost in the in the details if you don't like really get clear on what you want people to do. Yeah. So very cool. So mini chat and there's free versions plus paid. It all depends on how much you use it, I believe. Yes. Um, based on that's how the pricing is worked out on that. And I think I, I think many chats that. even doing a conference right now too. They're, yeah, they are. I think it's in Austin yeah. in September. Yeah. Um, but at a minimum, go ahead, definitely set up an account with mini chat and set up your welcome message. It's totally free to do that. And then you can start um, one, you dip your toe in it for free and you solve your hundred uh, percent response time. So yeah, at, and, that's, that. and that's crucial because I have, I have a local small business that I do and those messages, well, I see that and I'm like, oh, I, I got to at least go do the thumbs up, you know, or well, something because I know that number will change and I get that notification from Facebook like, hey, you haven't responded. Well, I'm so glad you said that because sometimes I didn't clarify that. Why is that important? It's because when someone comes to your page and they're thinking about leaving you a message, if they see that you don't respond for three days, they're right. not going to leave you a message. No, not at all. And and I would think too, even though you know the algorithm changes so much, that response time and how you in, you know communicate people in the app in your messages, it's got to affect what they see on the newsfeed too, in one yeah. way or the other. So it's real important to to make sure you're engaging on there. So, so very cool. We, we've hit our five tools and uh, we've gone a little bit more than the 30 minutes. So I appreciate Kim being on here. Now, Kim, where can we find you everywhere? You mentioned KimGarst.com. Um, and is that where you're at? Are you Kim Garst on all the socials? I am Kim Garst on all the socials, except for my business page, which is Kim Garst Biz. Oh, okay. So unbeknownst to me, this is a, this might be a business lesson. If you haven't grabbed your, um, your personal, you know, fan page or your personal profile. I grabbed my Kim Garst for my personal profile. Wasn't thinking because I didn't know at the time. <laughs> and so then I couldn't do Kim Garst obviously for my business page. So uh, it is it what happens. It is. Yeah. yeah. And that's when people have the underscore in their name and yeah, it's always hard to find. So, so Kim, it was really fun to talk to you. I'm so glad, glad I finally got to chat with you. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we'll have to do this definitely again. So y'all make sure you go check out KimGarst.com and check out all the tools. They're all in the comments. Uh, we'll probably put it in the description later on once this gets uh, the recording is, is up. And uh, we have another live interview in about an hour and a half with Neil Schaefer. So if you're watching and you want to see what Neil Schaefer is up to, uh, I'll have him on camera here in about an hour and a half. So uh, appreciate your time, Kim. Yeah, great. Take care, guys. Thanks, everybody.